it's finally here. Since making my last tutorial video on how to make a city using geometry nodes, geometry nodes has changed a lot and therefore the last tutorial I made is a bit outdated. So I'm going to make this update video for you today in version 3.0 of Blender using the new geometry node system to create the same sort of city. And actually I've learned a few more tips and tricks along the way so this will actually be a more efficient build of that city as well. You can see on the screen here a little preview of what's to come. And what's great about this new setup is that you can actually apply this new city to actually any shape or mesh that you want and the city will extrude as it would be from the surface of that material which is really cool so you can create these really funky looking cities on planets as well. Or if you want to save some time this file will be available on a Gumroad link down in the description below if you want to head down there and just download that and save yourself the faff of watching this video. So let's have a look at how to make a city in Blender 3.0. If you haven't already please consider subscribing and give the video a like this helps you out. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna make a new scene and just in the settings panel, turn on ambient occlusion, bring the distance up, turn on bloom and screen space reflections, just so the scene can look as they should do. We're gonna make a new geometry node group. And what we're gonna do is name the city and then delete the group input. We're gonna add a mesh primitive and we're gonna add a grid, which is essentially a plane pretty much. It's not actually a grid, it's just a plane but it's a plane made of vertices, but it is filled in. And this will act as the base of our city. What we're gonna do now is add a cube, not in the geometry nodes, but in our actual scene. Make a new collection, move this cube to that collection and just call it building one. Now, when we go back into our geometry nodes on the grid, what we're gonna do is add an instance to points node. And then gonna add a point, distribute points on face node, connect the mesh to the mesh, the points to the points, and the instances output to, well, actually, first of all, create a join geometry node, connect our grid and the instance on points together so that we can see the grid on the floor as well uh, as what will be our city. Now, if you see, we increase the, the density, obviously nothing is appearing and that's because we haven't told any object to appear. So what we're gonna do is add an object info node, connect that to the instance on the instance on points and select our building one. Now this has just made a convoluted mess of cubes that are all exactly the same size. So how do we change the scale? Well, add a random value node in and we're gonna change this to vector and connect the value to the scale. And what this will allow us to do is to randomly change the settings of the X, Y, and Z values. And in this case, we obviously wanna have taller buildings. So let's bring the minimum X and Y to 0.1, or actually, and the Z as well, and bring the max up to 0.2, 0.2, and the height on the Z to one because we want the cities to be taller but sort of cubic in their shape. Now the next thing we're going to want to do just for now is add a geometry translate node in because at the moment you see our city sort of crushing through the plane and this was a problem in the last tutorial as well. Well if we add this transform node in and on the translation just move that to one meter on the z axis then our building should sit perfectly flush on the base of our mesh. And if we bring the z value down a bit we can kind of create these low level buildings and there you go, you kind of got the sort of base low level buildings. If we duplicate this set of nodes, and we're also gonna connect the grid input to the mesh of this, and this is gonna act as a slightly taller set of buildings separate from the lower level. So we can manually control the amount of lower level buildings as well as the taller ones. If we bring the Z value up on the random value, but actually bring that density down because we don't want there to be so many of these taller buildings, just a few of them bring the Z value up and then there you go. You've got a mix of less taller buildings and uh, lots of smaller buildings uh, on the base below. And again, you can manually control using the density, uh, just how many of each layer you want to put in. And you could duplicate this whole thing again and make maybe a mid set tier of buildings too. What's really great is that if you change the size on the X and Y of this grid, you can see that the city will procedurally generate on the size of the grid. All of the scaling will be Correct, you don't have to keep applying the scale of your object, which you did in the uh, the last tutorial. And again, what's really cool is that we can actually switch the grid out for, let's say, a sphere. And as long as the rotation on our distribute points to faces is connected to the rotation of our instance on points, then all of our cubic buildings will align along the normals of our object, which is really cool. You can get this really sort of funky looking sort of mini planet effect, which is cool. But let's plug our grid back in we're gonna go back on the building and now we're gonna to start to add some variety to our buildings. At the moment, they're just cubes. So what we can do, uh, you know, we've got the same object info, there's one building plugged in, but we wanna actually randomize objects from a collection instead of having the same object. So 
let's duplicate our cube in the scene. And what we're going to do is just do a tiny bit of modeling on this. So we're going to select the top face, press I to insert, scale this down, press E to extrude the top out a bit, let's rotate that around. So we've got a tiny bit of detail on this roof and duplicate that first cube again. Again, I insert on the roof, bring this bit down. I again scale this, extrude it out just so there's a tiny bit of detail. You can add as many variations to this to these buildings as you want go with as much detail on the building as well as you want this is just to sort of demonstrate this concept and now you see if we go back on our city it's it's only adding this first cube and that's because we've got an object info selecting that building one what we actually want to do is add a collection info node select our buildings collection and this will tell it to select objects from this collection now at the moment it's adding all three cubes in as they are now what the simple way to fix this is select separate children and reset children on the collection info and then importantly over here on the instance on points select pick instance and that will just basically pick random objects from the collection we do the same down here on this sort of taller city build one you'll see that each building is a, a random one of these cubes uh, the only thing which i haven't quite figured out if anyone knows how to do this is that the uh, the scaling does stretch obviously um, on the height so you do get these kind of taller extruding bits on, on the top. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but a uh, general gist is there. And there we go. You see again, if we sort of expand the size of this uh, this grid, you see that we're randomly populating these uh, three cubes from the buildings that we've got in the collection. And again, you can add as many to this collection as you want to really increase the variety of these buildings. So that's the basis of the geometry node setup. Let's add a uh, material in, shall we? Add a diffuse shader and a mix shader, connect principled BSDF and the diffuse to the mix shader. And let's change the diffuse to be red just so we can see what we're doing. If you watch my how to mix any material video, you'll know that if we just change the factor, it's going to switch between 100% of one and 100% of the other, which is not exactly what we want. Now, what we want to actually do is apply a roof material. So we're going to say that this red value on the top is going to go just on the roof. We'll change it to be a roof material later, but it's just for the demo. To do this, we're going to add a uh, input geometry node and also a converter separate XYZ node. Plug the normal of the geometry into the vector, separate X, Y, Z, plug the Z into the factor. And that's basically just going to say that any face that's facing upwards on the Z normal is going to have this red value applied. And you'll see if we uh, add this material to the rest of the cubes, look at the city. There we go. We've got a, a roof material, essentially. Now, obviously, we don't want this to be uh, to be red. I mean, you, you might want it to be, but uh, I don't in this case. Uh, again, this is just to demonstrate the, uh, the theory of it. Now, actually, what we want to do is uh, randomize as well the colors of the uh, the walls of the building because we don't want every building to be the same color on the side as well. So if we had an object info node and a converter color ramp. And if we change this value to constant and if we plug the random value of the object info into the factor, plug that into the base color. And what this will do is basically every single object will have a random color of whatever color we put on the color ramp applied to it. And whichever color we put more of on the color ramp, it's going to select more of that. So we sort of had a gray, dark gray, light gray, maybe a bluish color. Slide those around. You'll see that each individual cube, although they have the same material, is applying one of these base colors to the whole material of that entire object. And that's how we can sort of randomize the colors uh, per building uh, with a single material. Again, you can add way more detail to this as well if you want to add some textures and all of that. Again, this is just a sort of uh, basic theory on the material. Now to add a texture to the grid, we need to do this in the geometry node setup. So add a set material node and let's just add a new material and apply that in the set material to the grid. And there we go. We've got our completely procedurally generated city with uh, random textures and materials applied to each building that you can fully control and customize at the same time. You can control the density of the lower buildings, the higher buildings, you can add more tiers of buildings in, you can change the uh, the shape of the mesh and all of the buildings will align perfectly to it. There we go. I hope this was helpful. As I say, both an update to the original tool that I made, but also I think just a more refined version of it with some uh, even more interesting uh, tips and tricks on how to make a city. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Let me know down in the comments what you want to know more about. This is all building towards our new short film, The Dark Following 2. So I'm excited to sort of show you more about how we're generating some of the effects 
or this movie and I'll keep showing you more and more about anything I learn. Don't forget that a link to this file on Gumroad is available in the description below if you want to head down there. Alright, thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.